Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my Spiritual Growth Journeys channel. I am Kimberly Palm, your host here on this channel. Thank you so much for joining me back for another wonderful interview with an amazing light worker, Miss Nancy Yearout. I have with me here today on the show. I'm so excited. Nancy had me on her show, oh, back a, a few weeks or so ago, a while ago. And um, so now I'm having her on my show and I'm also deferring people to her because I've told you all in the uh, recent pa uh, past that I'm not going to be doing private sessions anymore. I'm only going to be teaching classes and doing women's um, spiritual support groups. And so Nancy is one of the people um, that I am sending people to for private sessions right now. So I wanted to have her on the show so we can, you can get to know more about her. She's a beautiful, amazing angelic light worker. And let me tell you a little bit about Nancy. Um, first of all, I have her beautiful book here wake up the universe is speaking to you this is her book and what's really interesting about nancy's book is i read through this actually the other day i read the whole thing and i already knew everything in it but it's basically everything that i've known and have been teaching people for the last 20 something years so it, part of why i'm sending people to nancy for private sessions is because nancy and i think alike we are totally on the same sheet of paper with our beliefs and our our christianity our um you know our love for yeshua for christ we both have a passion for christ you know, and um, just everything, we're both on the same, same frequency, same sheet of paper. And when I read through her book, it was just confirmation to me. In fact, I was actually kind of scared when I picked her book up to read it because I was like, okay, I'm sending people to her, but what if I read her book and find out that I don't agree with her, her thinking or, you know, her information. And then I read through the book and I was so happy and pleased to see that everything in here is all the same information I teach in my classes. I've been teaching and talking about and we, we are 100% sisters, like she's my blonde sister, basically. <laughs> so, um, so we, we, we teach the same information, we have the same political belief systems, the same spiritual belief systems, you know, we're very, very much alike. So Nancy is the voice behind the popular podcast High Road to Humanity. Her online video presence is the host of Nancy Yearout's High Road to Humanity. You will find her video presence on YouTube, BitChute, and on her website, which is nancyyearout.com. She is a recognized author, public speaker, spiritual leader of the light, connecting folks all over the world to the divine source that she calls God. She interviews experts in their field, such as health, wellness, meditation, medical, Reiki, science, religion, gem and mineral experts, essential oils and their benefits, mediums, shamans, and just ordinary people who need to have their voices heard. Nancy is an empathic psychic intuitive. Her gifts include claircognizant, a clear knowing of things and clairsentience, which is a true feeling and a clear sense of a person's emotional state, past, present, and future. She considers herself a messenger of God. Nancy is also an energy healer and uses her abilities to heal illness and those in need. She is a writer for Eden Magazine, a monthly self-help publication, and she's the author of this wonderful book, Wake Up, the Universe is Speaking to You. You can book a session with Nancy on her website to ask her questions and watch her videos or to learn more about how you can tap into your own abilities. So welcome to my show on YouTube. Thank you for joining me, Nancy. Thank you for having me, Kimberly. I'm excited to be here with you. Yeah, I'm excited too, because we were kind of talking a little bit about what's going on in the world before the show started. And it sounds like you're kind of getting some of the same intel or info on a spiritual level and on a political level that I'm getting. Um, yeah. So, you know, I kind of want to start off with that. I mean, where I want to talk to you today a little about your book, a little about your shows, a little bit about your, your news with Nancy on Sundays and all that. But for right now, I'd like to start off kind of talking about what is happening in the world right now. I got a video sent to me with our, our favorite leader who's hiding in Florida. He, he was interviewed on Fox News and they asked him, when is he coming back? And he said, I can't tell you that, but you're going to be really happy. He said, everybody is going to be really happy. Yeah. And, and even, I think it was not Tucker, it was Carlson. It was the other guy, Hannity, I guess, looked really happy, apparently, and excited when he said that. Um, mm -hmm. It was Hannity interviewing him and he looked super 
super happy. So, so I'm excited. And I sent that to a lot of people and they, and they all answered and said, Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. You know, everybody's, everybody's like, come on now, now, now we got to do this. I think that too. Well, I pick it up intuitively as well. I pick up September um, that he will come back into the picture. I really um, am concerned. I think this whole thing with Afghanistan right now, I do a whole thing on uh, News with Nancy on Sundays where I give my intuitive take on what's happening with humanity mm-hmm. right now. And I feel like I should do that, Kimberly, just because I, I have a clear knowing of things. Yeah. I feel like the whole situation in Afghanistan is really a horrible situation, first yeah. of all, because the people over there, you've got a lot of innocent women and children. Oh, yeah. Who- yeah, are just it's left terrible. the Taliban right now. And yeah. that the whole situation, I mean, it wasn't done properly as we know, but I almost feel like intuitively that it was a way to um, have us focus on that instead of some other things that are going on right now. And so I've noticed the states are changing their mandates and that on um, the COVID situation. And, and it's back to school time for kids. Yeah. So it's interesting to me, it almost feels like um, it's a, a distraction. Not to say, not to put light, of course, on the children and, you know, the women who are not getting out of Afghanistan as quickly as they should, but why right. now? And why at this point? So right. it, uh, that's what I feel. I almost feel like, you know, it was to have to do this now. The timing of it. Yeah, I, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this whole thing, because first of all, there's questions about the fact that when they show the airplane taking off on the runway with the guys hanging off of it and dropping to the ground right. and getting killed, it's all men. There's not one woman there. There's not one child. So you look at that and they're like, well, where are all the women? Where are all the children? They wouldn't allow them to try to run away and escape. I mean, none of this makes any sense. So I wonder how much of that was staged. I'm looking at that going, that's got to be staged because there's no women or or children there. They're what? They're going to allow their women, their wives and their sisters and mothers to stay behind and get raped. You know, I mean, it's, it's terrible. They're forcing 12 year old little girls into marriage. These girls don't even have a menstrual period yet. They're children. And so that's basically rape, you know. Well, the other thing minutes. is, Kimberly, and not to interrupt you, your train of thought there, but the other thing is they're bringing these people over to the United States. And mm-hmm. these are people who um, have a different way of life and a different way of looking at things. They don't have the same values that we have here in the United States. And they've brought a lot of them over already from Afghanistan, and they're at some military bases. I know in Texas right now, uh, I know some brought last week, but to integrate um, a different type of people, a uh, different type of culture, again, they don't have the same type of culture that we have and bring them in and try to integrate them. I'm wondering um, how that's going to work out and why that's being done. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about it too. They also said that their plan was eventually to, to bring in, what did they say, Two mil, two million or something of them. It was like they were going to bring eventually in two million of them into our country or something like. It was some huge number like that. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. We already have a problem with the borders, with all the people coming over and then getting put in buses, and they all have that disease. You know, they have the disease, and they're they're not requiring them to get this thing at all, and they're sticking them on buses and sending them all over the country. We already have that problem and now they're going to bring all those other people in here and try to integrate them and they come from one of the worst poorest third world countries in the world you know it's like it's not like you know mexico like i go there on vacation all the time and and when i'm there you know you go to a grocery store it's very similar to us you know mexico is not i mean yeah there's a lot of poverty and it is still kind of a third worldish or second worldish country because there's so much poverty there but the the culture there is not different than here and the right. culture is really the same whereas the culture in afghanistan a hundred percent different from ours a hundred percent different all their respect they have no respect for women yeah. and 
biggest thing. And then we're going to put these people into our, into our neighborhoods. I just, you know, I'm just wondering my feeling on this is almost like, why is it being done at this time? And at the same time that they're really pushing, um, you know, this thing. So it's, it's a combination is yeah. what I happening right now, honestly. And honestly, in New Mexico, um, that's where I'm at right now. I'm in Albuquerque and their mandate came across yesterday where we have to start wearing masks. I talked to my daughter this morning in Michigan, same thing. And so I know in New York, they've made it so, and this is a big deal, you guys, and I'm telling people to stand up. And that's why I do news with Nancy, because in New York right now, if you don't have one of these passports to prove that you've had the thing, then you can't go anywhere. You can't go to restaurants. You can't go to a baseball game. And here in New Mexico, they have put out, you're going to freak out. You can't go to the county fair or to the state fair. And that's outdoor. That's outdoor. Yeah, you can't go to the state fair. And I love the state fair. I love the New Mexico. I do too. <laughs> I get my corn and I get my cotton candy and all that stuff. But unless you have had the thing, then you cannot go. And they've said that yesterday. And that just, I feel like our rights are really being infringed upon at this point. And then it's time for us to stand up. It's time yeah. for us to wake up. Mm -hmm. That's why I wrote this. Yeah. And I wrote this a long time ago. It's time for me. I to love the title. Wake up. I mean, that's what everybody's doing, right? Yeah. But you know, it's time to write a new one. And my new one's going to be connect with God because that's the part that we're all missing or a lot of people are missing. Well, that's why I came here to this planet for that purpose. I mean, I've told people over and over in my videos that um, back in 2011, Yeshua told me he wanted me to continue teaching what he was teaching. Well, what is he teaching? He was teaching people how to connect with God. And so, you know, people in my private sessions when I, cause I'm going to be doing them up until the end of um, September before I go to a class format, everybody is always trying to get me to just spoon feed them all the answers to everything in their life. And I am told, no, 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 no. You know, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to give them a little bit of answers, but I'm supposed to be really working with them on opening their, right. their pineal decalcifying it, which is why I did a whole interview on Elena Denon's channel, all about the pineal. My whole thing is focusing on how do we develop our gifts how do we develop our connection to, to God, to Christ consciousness, because Jesus Christ or Yeshua, which is his real name, you know, he talks to everybody, you know, right. all the time, but right. they can't hear him right. because their mind is gobbledygoo. It's either their mind is being controlled by the media or the cabal or their mind is um, all my, it's all, all the, you know, the, the, what do you want to call it? The, um, uh, the you know, the stuff they've been spraying the chemtrails right. and all the talk. Well, Kimberly, and all I just feel like it's a choice. Okay. Yeah. We all have a choice and we're down to a choice. Yeah. And so you can, this is what I really feel. And I can't make anybody connect with God. I can, no. they come to me and they ask me, I can lead by example. Mm -hmm. They can see that I'm a balanced person. Why am I balanced? Because I connect every single day. Right. I bring the light every exactly. single day. Right. Yeah. And so I think what we can do is lead by example and, and teach people literally how to connect with the divine. And it only takes a moment. The other thing I want to mention really quickly is that I, in the last few months, I've been connecting with Gaia, Mother Earth, and it's not out there. OK, you guys, it's not weird. Um, I go out in the morning, I take off my shoes, I've got my cup of coffee in my hand, and I can feel the energy coming up through my oh, heck. Yeah, of course. I teach that all the time. And, but we have to get back to that as a yeah. people, you know, um, and it's funny because I've watched the earthing, you know, show on Gaia and he talks about tennis shoes were like the worst thing that were ever invented because they're so thick, the souls that you don't have that energy, the healing energy that comes from the earth. Anyway, right. I would like for people to understand that the earth is alive. We need to connect with her She's conscious. She's conscious. Yes. And that there is a higher power, you can call it God, divine, whatever you want to say. But once you connect, it is healing and it's balancing. And yes, that's how you get your messages. And that's how I get my messages. They come from God. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. They also come from Gaia too. Sometimes I can go connect with the tree and get a message, you know, right from, from Gaia, you know, so they, they come from both, you know, her messages are usually more about healing or about nature. They're more nature kind of oriented kind of messages and stuff. Yeah. And I um, work with the land. I I probably, you don't know this, but I'm a real estate broker and I sell land here in New Mexico. mm -hmm. And so when I go to put a piece of land on the market and I'm developing a new thing right now, so it's not, it's not solid yet. So I won't go into it too much, but I'm going out to the land and I'm connecting with Gaia and the nature spirits. And I'm clearing that land and I'm bringing my energy into that land so that it's soluble and that it brings the right buyer to that piece of property. So right. that's something, well, yeah, I've been a real estate broker for 20 some years. Gosh, mm-hmm. that's how I sent my kids to college and all of that. Yeah. But now I've decided there's, there's a different way to do it. And that's something I'm working on too as well. I'm busy all the time. So I'm you're healing the land. You're healing and you're spreading light. You're doing light work basically. Yes, yes, yes. Because it needs to be done and we need to do real estate differently. Yeah. We really do. We need to change it, how we do it. Um, I've sold houses for years. I have done developments, all of that kind of thing. But I really like the land because I connect. Mm-hmm. When I go out there, I can feel the energy and I've done really well, um, you know, helping people. It's a, it's a whole thing, you know, um, it's a win-win for everybody, actually. You know, yeah. I, I benefit, they benefit, the land benefits, the person coming in, the person going out. Right. So it's a whole thing. So that's something I'm working on too right now. I love this. Thank you for sharing this because you know what? Um, so I've dabbled in real estate. My husband and I had a real estate business. For oh, Wow. Yeah, okay. we were we were buying and selling condos and houses and all yeah. kinds of stuff. And we bought bought and sold pieces of land as well. And mm-hmm. I love this because it's from more of a conscious perspective, you know, oh, yeah. it's very conscious, it's very heart centered. Mm-hmm. And I really like that, you know, especially when you're engaging with the land. Like I love the fact that the land that I'm living on right now was all Native American um, at one time. This was where they were doing their hunting and their trading and they lived here. And it's such a high mm-hmm. vibrational frequency. And I have neighbors in my neighborhoods that have seen spirits of little Native American children running around and yeah, all nice. kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's very, um, you know, and I'm not on a, on a, what do you want to call the burial ground? You don't ever want to buy yeah, Don't on, you don't right. want to live near a berry gor- because the the spirits are really powerful that guard that and you're going to get your ass whooped really hard so you don't want to do that Yeah, i agree and you know you're correct because i'm um, here in new mexico we are surrounded albuquerque especially and um, rio rancho area is surrounded by reservations mm-hmm. and all yeah, of i'm this. all surrounded by reservations yeah, yeah. And, yeah and that's why the vibration here people come here it's a spiritual place like i was in texas yeah. for a while and i like texas but it didn't have the same feel. No, New Mexico is very high vibe. I've been all over New Mexico and I love the energy there. Beautiful energy, yeah. which is why the ETs attract to that state so much. Yes, they're here too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. So it's yeah. interesting. But I don't worry so much, you know, all the craziness going on in the world. I always feel pretty safe because I figure, you know, we're good to go right here um, with we've got Sandia Labs going and we've got a lot of the ETs right. I think, in the mountains. So I think we're good for right now. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I like doing the land and that's something I'm working on right now. The big thing that I'm doing um, is my show. Uh, you know, I've done my podcast for it'll be three years that I've done High Road to Humanity. I did it after I wrote the book. I felt like I wasn't getting the word out. Like I have this yearning like you do probably in my gut that says, tell people about God, tell people yeah. about faith, tell people that this is real, that this stuff is really important. Mm-hmm. And that's why I started doing my podcast, to be honest with you. I just felt like people weren't hearing it. Like I needed to get that message out to people. So mm-hmm. that's why I started doing the podcast. And then I started doing the YouTube channel, gosh, probably about a year ago. And it's been fun. It's been interesting um, and fun all at the same time. And it's neat to interview all these different people. And I don't agree with everybody I interview. But I let them have their say because I feel that we all need to hear both sides, you know, sometimes. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's like Nicholas Benyamin. 
he and he'll interview a lot of different kinds of people because he just yeah. wants to hear all the different you know views and bring uh, interesting information to his viewers. But yeah. he doesn't necessarily like agree with what everybody's saying on you know that he always has on you know right. all the time. So um, it's that same thing. So um, you so you talked about the fact that you're an empath. So when did you first figure out that you had all of these like the clear cognizance and the and all of your abilities? Like how old were you, and at what point in your life was it when you figured out that you had all these amazing gifts? Well, thanks for asking. Um, you know, I've always known that I was intuitive, but I didn't use it that much. My grandma was real intuitive, um, but. And they did the Ouija board, which is so bad. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe it's they terrible. Did it pulls in all the demonic energy. I know. And everything. But she, yeah, but she was really into Edgar Casey. Like I have oh all her gosh. old Edgar yeah. Casey books and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, she used to say she could move clouds and stuff. It was really crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I think the energy, but when I got into real estate and started to do affirmations, mm -hmm. um, you know, I started to realize that I could draw things to myself. I was a single mom with two kids and I needed to draw business to myself. And so I started to say, um, I sell houses like crazy mm -hmm. and money flows immediately and constantly to me. And I accept the abundance. And I said all these affirmations and I started to work with the energy and I started to realize that whatever I was saying and whatever I was putting out there was coming back. And I was rookie of the year for the board of realtors, my first wow, year. Yeah. That's so awesome. So, but it, what I learned was it was the energy. I had a lady, uh, she taught me, her name was Naomi back in Michigan, and she did tarot cards. And she read tea leaves, which I think is really interesting because people don't do that anymore. No, that's a Russian thing. I had family members yeah. who did that like from yeah. a long time ago that are, they're not alive anymore, but I had cousins way back when who came from, came from Russia who read tea leaves. Yeah. So, and yeah. she was just really intuitive and she was like my second mom. And she encouraged mm -hmm. me, like I'd call her on Sunday and say, do you think I'll sell something? And she'd say, well, put it out there. Or she'd say to me, and I want to tell the audience this, she'd say, draw it in. And I'd say, well, what do you mean? And she'd say, draw it in. Think about what you want, you know, create. So I started to learn over time that whatever I thought about and whatever I put out there is what I got back. And that's how I learned to sell real estate. And that's how I learned about energy to oh, begin with. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the beginning of it all. How did I become a, an empath or how did I know I was an empath? My husband cheated on me. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it was a sad situation. The more I became psychic, the more shows that I did, the more people that I spoke to, the more books that I read, the more I became connected to God, I started to pick up other people's energy, mm -hmm. not meaning to. Um, and then it got to be where I sat down or I would sit on the couch every evening with my husband after I made dinner and I started to see a girl around him. And yeah, it was a hard, this was a hard lesson That's for me. That's awful. Yeah, it was a hard lesson. And I, I, and I didn't want to pick up this information, to be honest with you. And so then I would call all my friends who were psychics and say, is this happening? And they'd say, yeah. And I just, I had such a hard time believing it. But what I was doing was learning my own gifts. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds harsh, but for some reason, God put me in this position um, he wasn't the right person for me, but I learned how psychic I was. Mm -hmm. And then I started to um, help people go to the light. I, in the shower, people would come to me. And I, it, first, it was a boyfriend that I had when I was young. And he came to me and I was like, why are you in the shower with me? <laughs> and, then, and then I got out and I looked up online. He had died like five years before. And he was, wow. in, between. He was in between. Yeah. And so I sent him. And then I called someone and said, how do I send these people? Because they're coming to me. Because what was happening, like, you know, I was getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Yeah. So as I became brighter. You're the, attracting everything. Yeah. So then there, so then I had to say, well, you can't come in the shower because I'm in the shower. But that's where they would come, you know. So then I had to learn that whole thing. So it took me a while. But that's how I learned I was an empath. And now, wow. yeah. So now I've learned, well. And I've had a lot of different experiences that have happened to me where I've had things jump on me and not 
I've learned over time how to protect myself. I mm-hmm. still have to be really careful. I take sea salt baths. I use sage. I use a lot of salt. Um, I put little salt packets in my pockets when I go out. I what about put, Palo Santo? Do you use Palo? I use a lot of Palo Santo. I do. Yeah. 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 And I, and I talk to God and just ask for protection because what happens is, yeah, that's my little spray. It's Palo Santo and sage yeah. oil mixed yeah. together with, um, water yeah. and I yeah. just spray it all like crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've gotten to the point where now I've gotten more popular on YouTube. So I've got to, I've gotten stronger with my, um, I'm mm-hmm. putting the cross of Jesus in front of me. I have to, I've got a lot of people who are shooting some stuff at me. So I've learned, I've had to learn how to protect. I've had to learn that I'm an empath. I've had to learn that I can only be around certain people and mm-hmm. for only a certain period of time. Yeah. yeah. I've learned how to protect myself because I've had to. So it's been a learning process for me so that I could teach others Mm -hmm. is what this has been for me. I've realized now it's interesting, Kimberly, everything I've gone through in my life and I've gone through so many different things and still am, of course, because we're here to learn, but each thing has brought me more information. And the reason that it's important that I went through all these things I have finally figured out is so I would know what it felt like. So when someone comes to me and says to me, my husband is cheating on me, I know what that feels like. I'm, I, my mom was a narcissist. So when people say to me, oh, I'm with a narcissist, I'm like, oh, I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's been so many different things that have happened to me in my lifetime and it's all led up to now. Yep. It's a learning lesson. lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when people come and say, and as I've become more, as I connect every day, I've become more and more psychic. Um, I have a clear knowing of things, Mm -hmm. even if I don't want to, (laughs) (laughs) even if I don't want to know, I know, I just know. And I, I, people say, oh, do you connect your spirit guides? No, I don't. I connect with my angel and God, and that's it. There are no, it's not like that for me. I have a like a clear and people say oh you can't connect directly with god yes you can oh yes you can in fact that's what christ was here teaching christ was here teaching just that but you hear people say that so i want to correct and and let people know that and my goal is truly kimberly if you really want to know my 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 goal for everybody is to be able to connect Mm -hmm. i want everyone to me too well me too that's like my prime directive here Yes. I don't want them to call and say, Nancy, what do you think? I mean, I'll tell yeah. you, but mm-hmm. my goal is to teach you to do it so that you can do it. So you don't have to call me. Right. Well, we're yeah. doing the work of Christ. You know, you're, you're, we're the hands and the feet as they say, but the, the thing is, is that all of the stuff he was here teaching, which was mainly about how to connect directly with the father, you know, he referred right. to it as the father, but it's right. really father, mother, because God doesn't have a sex. It's sexless, nameless, faceless. You know, it is, I am that I am. Um, and it carries both the energies of, you know, feminine and, and masculine divine, you know, in balance. Um, so, you know, the thing is, is that, I mean, my whole prime direct, I have a lot of reasons I'm here. I have a lot of what I call missions or life missions. And I talk about that in my book, Ascension 101, you know, your purpose, your soul purpose versus your life missions. And I have several life missions, but my main prime directive is before I leave the earth plane to teach as many humans as I can, two things, number one, how to connect with God and how to heal themselves, how to heal themselves and how to connect with God. Those that's it. That's right. And so that's, that's, I use my voice. Like, that's what I put on my podcast. I use my voice to uplift uh-huh. humanity. That's what I do. I've always wanted to do broadcasting. When I was in high school, I asked my mom and dad if I could go to broadcasting school and they said no. And I didn't, I got married and I had kids. And so now I'm doing what I always wanted to do and I'm using my voice. That's it. Wow. And that's why your slogan is I use the energy of my voice to uplift humanity. That's your slogan. Yeah. And I love it. I love it. It's so beautiful. So how, um, how is your show, the high road to humanity? How has that influenced both your life and your audience? You know, it's funny every week, God sends me the person I need to have on the show. So I learn that next step 
it's really interesting how he planned it all out. It was like, seriously, it's, it's gone on for years now. I mean, every week he sends me the person that I'm supposed to have because I need to get that next step. And so I figure the audience is learning all this stuff along with me. You know, we're just learning it together because every week we learn a little bit more and a little bit more. Just like when you came on the show, Kimberly, you told the audience more information, more information. People need to have this information and they need to be able to make a choice. You know, they need to listen to the information and choose, you know, freely. What do I want to do with that? So, yeah, it's changed me 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I'm trying to think what else I wanted to talk to you about. So how do you feel about, did we, I don't remember if we talked about this before we came on the recording or if we already talked about this, about the whole, um, this whole thing that's going on in the world now, this whole scenario, like, like, um, I, I, what do you feel is about to happen or going to happen? I really feel like there's going to be something major, like what I call a false flag event that's going to happen in October. That's going to be to scare awake the rest of the mass population of people who are uh, zombified right now sleeping. I think there's going to be some big event that's going to happen, but I also think there's going to be some other things that are going to happen leading up into that. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's already happening. Well, I've had people on my show and you have to realize people are losing their jobs because they don't want to get the thing. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, I'm self-employed, mm -hmm. but if I wasn't self-employed, I would be out of my job right now. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> right. Okay. So that's yeah. number one. I'm watching yeah. people and I've had nurses contact me. I've had, I've had so many people contact me because I've been doing shows on it to try to help people um, in the state of New Mexico where I'm at. And overall, of course, you know, so what I feel is that it's going to become mandatory and there's going to be an uprising. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. I feel that that's what's going to happen. And people are finally going to stand up and say, no, mm -hmm. we have free will. We have free choice. These things are not legal. Um, I brought out a lot of the legalities in this stuff. You know, there's the Nuremberg Code. Right. There are a lot of different things that I brought out legal. Mm -hmm. You know, this stuff that's going on right now is yeah. not legal. It's breaking HIPAA law. It's breaking constitutional law. It's breaking right. human rights, Nuremberg, all of that. Yeah. When they're doing, and I just told a lady, I went to physical therapy earlier today. And I told the lady at the front desk, I said, these people who are required, these bosses and companies that are mand mandating that this stuff happens, they're going to be tried for crimes against humanity. Right. Yeah. I believe that's what's going to happen. I think they're going to say that everybody has to have it in order to go to the grocery store. It's already happening mm -hmm. in New York City, like I said previously. That's what I think is going to happen. Honestly, and I also see um, Mr. T coming back too. when mm -hmm. I said that earlier. But what do I think? I think it has to get this way. You know, um, it has I think to get ugly to wake yeah, people up. Yeah, yeah, because exactly before they wake up. Mm -hmm. Some of us are awake, but some of us aren't, and then some of us will never be. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the strangest thing. And just I want to say something. You know. A lot of people have contacted me and said, you know, my son doesn't understand. He's not woken up. My daughter's not woken up. My mm -hmm. husband is not woken up. I mean, it's down to that. It's down to where oh, I my whole been. my whole family. I'm the only one in my entire family. I'm talking spouse, kids, yeah. adult kids, cousins, you know, aunts and uncles, everybody. They're all they're yeah, gone. And there's nothing you, you guys, yeah. there's nothing you can do. You can only lead yeah. by example. And I just want to say that because. Mm -hmm. So many people come to me and they feel like they're, they have a responsibility to tell these people, but here's the thing. We're all individual souls and we yeah. all are going to wake up at our own mm -hmm. um, time. And so some people are going to need this jolt to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, are going to have to perish, I think, before people see it. So right. Because I think even though maybe you've gotten this, you're still, it's almost like you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't, you're still going to, you're still going to perish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's a tough situation and it's hard to watch, but you can't, 
change another person. They have, this is our, it's like, God has given us all a choice, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I I was, I I, I agree with you a hundred percent. We all have a choice. And I got to tell you that for a while I was trying to wake everybody up you know, and then at at a point, my team spoke to me, my team, meaning Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, you know, my team, God Mm -hmm. said to me, no, you need to stop. They need to do this for themselves. You can't, you can't be their mommy and you can't force them. You know, you can't do that. You have to let them decide for themselves. They have free will. And, and they told me to back down and to just focus on working with my clients and helping the people who are awake. And they said, Kimberly, you're not here for the sleepers. You're here for the people who are awake, who need, who need you, who need to be guided and led. You're not here for those other people. And I want to say the sleepers, I was going to have, I'm going to have a girl on my show um, from England and I haven't had her yet, but she wrote this really awesome thing about the sleepers and, <laughs> and how they have a purpose too. Yeah, they how do. They- how they have a purpose too. And so that's why it's really important that we don't judge. I just want to say that no judgment at all. I mean, they're just, yeah, they are where they are in their soul plan in their life. Yeah. Yeah. So don't get angry and don't get, you know, just do your thing, do your thing. (laughs) Stay balanced. That's the biggest thing I can tell people is if you get, I get up every morning and I say my prayers and I connect Mm -hmm. with God and I connect with Gaia and I, put protection around myself and I'm stay balanced all day. Yeah, me too. All day. All yeah. day. And when I go out in the world, I'm not afraid. Yeah. No, not a bit. No, so, well, the fear lowers your vibration and prevents your ascension. And that's what the evil, the dark ones with the mainstream news and all that, they want this fear agenda because it keeps everybody in a low vibration and prevents the ascension because in order to ascend, you can't be in a place of fear. You have to be in a place of love and balance and peace. And so I focus every day on trying to be there and trying to teach other people how to be there and, and don't be in fear because God already won. I have a, a sweatshirt I bought that says, I read the final I know, chapter. I saw that. Yeah. God won, <laughs> you know, God already won. Those. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it has a cross in the, in the O, which is kind of cute, but, but the, but it's the truth, you know, the, the yeah. light has won, God has won because outside of earth, there is no time. And in, in the time of God and in the time of the angelic beings and all that, and the ETs and the star family, we have, we have already won. And so there's nothing to fear. And, and even if people die, like in your life, like what I try to tell my clients is if your mom or dad or husband or wife or whoever, even kids, if they pass, yeah, it'll be sad, but their soul chose that because every soul has a choice. We have free will and they were just baby souls that weren't ready for the ascension. And they have a lot more lessons, you know, to learn. Right. And And that's okay. And that is okay. And, and they get upset and they're like, Oh, but then I'm not going to see them anymore. And I'm not going to have them in my life. And (laughs) well, you're actually, you're actually going to see them because the veil is going to come down and it's going to go bye-bye because this is the only planet. And I've said this over and over again in videos, it's the only planet in the universe and in space where we get separated from our loved ones after they go, because all the other beings in the higher densities and dimensional frequencies, yeah. They they have the ability to telepathically communicate with their all their family anytime they want, whenever they want. They've got all their memories of who they were before they they came here and all that kind of stuff. So I want to tell you something as you're talking about this. I want you to know they're rooting for us. They're all up there, you guys. Yeah, I know I they're going. Know go, I need go, to say go, this. Go, go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know this and I take, I mean, they are rooting for us. They are man. rooting for they us. They are. And they're watching us and they're like, come on, you guys, you can do it. You can do it. So don't think that your loved ones aren't up there just hoping that we all, you know, and watching us do this because this is a major thing that's mm-hmm. happening right now. It's a really exciting time to be alive. Mm-hmm. It's exciting time to be connected with God. It is exciting. And did you ever see the original Star Wars movie, the first one? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Do you remember when Obi-Wan Kenobi allowed Darth Vader to kill him? Do you remember that? 
Yeah, and they because they had to put him back together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? No. Okay. Obi Wan Kenobi was the teacher of Luke Skywalker, and he was in a fight with Darth Vader to the death, and he just sat there, sat down, shrunk down, and allowed Darth Vader. Okay. To all right. All right. Him. All right. Now I do. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then he went into the spirit form, and he was able to guide Luke in spirit form all the time, That's and Luke right. always saw him all the time. That's okay. right. Okay. It's the same thing as Christ. So Christ could have stopped them from putting him up on the cross, but he didn't. So you know why? <laughs> so he could guide us. Because when you, because when you, when you're, when you're in the physical body, you're this wimpy ass little human creature. But when you're in spirit form, you're this warrior and you're really strong and powerful. You have all these powers and you're able to guide a lot of people and you're able to see everything going on and you're able to influence everything on the planet. You can't do that when you're in a physical form. I right think, now, I, right well, now. I think that's what we're getting back. But we're like, heading towards that. Yes, we're going to get yes. it back in the yes. body. Because, I would say that because yeah. I feel like... I'm getting it back. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, right you're going to get back all your yeah. superpowers. All of us yeah. are. And the thing is, is that this is the first time in history that an entire planet of beings get to ascend in the body without dying first, because mm -hmm. usually you have to die to ascend just like Christ did. But in this yeah. case, we are all ascending in a body, I which know. is freaking amazing. It's <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Excited. I will tell you, I love doing my show. I love interviewing people. I love coming on shows like yours and talking about God. Uh, I like to talk to people who are on the same level so they understand because it's hard. Some people don't understand me. You know, um, you talked and I talked about when we were younger, how we felt like we were adopted because we didn't mm -hmm. fit in. Didn't fit in. Yeah. And I've always felt like that. I've never fit in. And, um, but now I know why I was preparing for now. And mm -hmm. this is most exactly. Time. Yeah. And so um, I'm having a, I'm living my dream. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Right now. I had a lot of dreams yeah. when I was a kid of us having like a Star Trek kind of future, you know, like I saw in the future flying cars and I have my whole life. Like I keep seeing these visions of like all this high tech stuff. Yeah. And I think in the next 10 years, we're going to have all that. Yeah. I do it's too. Be really cool. I think we're going to have hovercrafts. We're going to have, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we're, when we have all our gifts back, we'll be able to bilocate if we want to, or telepathically communicate yeah. with your cousin in France or, you know, whatever, you know, or be in Paris in four minutes to have dinner, you know, you'll be able to do that in the future. Yeah. It'll be heaven on earth. That's what Maureen St. Germain always says, heaven on earth. And so she always says, get up every morning and imagine that you're, and just say, today's going to be a day of heaven on earth. And it's whatever you put out, you guys, during this time, you know, saying that, just those words, today is a day of heaven on earth. I'm going to live a day of heaven on earth. Putting that intention out there changes the vibration and it elevates the vibration and it changes how your day goes. And all the people, you interact with too. pay attention to that when you are connected to God and you are praying and you are saying positive things notice the difference in people and how they connect with you it's quite interesting it's changing your thoughts too and I'm working on that right now too Kimberly I'm constantly working on myself constantly oh, me too every day I have days yeah. where I feel really depressed I'm not perfect you know yeah I'm me not either <laughs> I'll have days where I get depressed and, and I head for the chocolate and I start stuffing my face with lots of chocolate or yeah. cheesecake or something like that, because right. I mean, that's how I deal. I don't do drugs or alcohol. So when I want to uh, deal with emotional oh. stress, I usually yeah. turn to the, you know, the food kind of stuff. Cool. I wanted to say something about the alcohol because I was a big wine drinker. I always had a glass of wine and for like the last, I would say five years, I can't drink it anymore. It's I, like my I body. I can't drink it. Actually, makes me violently sick. Me too. Me too. And it's. Yeah. I think the more and it, that's weird. You know. I know they yeah. said Jesus drank wine and all that stuff, but I will tell you, it's not good for you because no. all of a sudden, and it was when I became very, very, very spiritual, very connected. I couldn't do it anymore. Same thing for you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then Elena Denon just did a video last night and I was listening to her say how alcohol lowers your vibration. Marijuana lowers your vibration. 
um, you know, um, uh, THC, all that, that lowers your vibration. And, and that's why people, you can do cannabis. Can it, they talk about cannabis in the Bible. They actually talk about it in the, well, cause the Bible. it's healing. It is healing. Mm-hmm. Like uh, yeah. for people who have like arthritis and right. stuff. Yeah. Right. But with the drug, yeah. But with also without the drug. Now I will tell you that the plain cannabis oil doesn't work for me. I need to have a little bit of THC in it, but I don't take enough of it to make me uh, affect, how, how do I want to say to affect my, my brain at all? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it doesn't change my, my brain, my, my body, you know, it, all it does is maybe makes me feel more calm and it the maybe helps say, with the pain. I know, but the angels say it's okay to have a little bit. Yeah. A little tiny, a tiny bit, but you don't want it. What I'm trying to say is you don't want to be drunk on drugs because just like Elena said, the entities, and I've been telling people the same thing she did. It was so nice to hear her say it because she's seeing it from a different perspective. She works with the, you know, beings up there. And so she was saying that they're saying that when you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol, like you're drunk or drugged up or whatever, that those entities will come right on into you. And she said that she would go to bars at night and just see, cause she's psychic. Like we are, she has those gifts. She mm-hmm. would see dark ener- entities hunting the people who are under the influence. They hunt them and then they would take them over. They would literally and hunt them. I believe that. And I don't yeah. want to mention any names, but I saw that happen personally to somebody. And I thought they were a drinker and I saw them become dark because what happens is, and and I agree with you wholeheartedly, it's like opening a a door. It opens a door for them and invites them in. Mm -hmm. And then you see a difference in that person and they're not the same. Personality changes. They get violent. Um, I'm not going to name names either, but I know somebody who um, this man, you know, got under the influence and then he would go nutso and beat the hell out of his son. And now his son and him have a horrible strain. The son is now an adult and has his own kids and never talks to his dad because his dad would get all drunk and go crazy and beat the hell out of his son all the time. And they do come in and take, take mm-hmm. people over when they do drink. That is true. That is very true. And that's probably why, um, we are not able to have, you know, and I never thought anything about it because I always had just one glass of wine. I mean, two would like really push me over the edge because I have a low tolerance to alcohol. I do too. I mean, I but it got to a point where if I go somewhere and someone says, do you want to drink? I say, no, I can't. It makes me sick. Mm-hmm. And so that's how it's become, you know, for me and meat too. I don't do a lot of meat either. I do some, but not a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like, eat very little of it. I notice my body is a lot happier with very minimal, yes. very minimal. I, I do need to eat some because if I don't eat some, I get really anemic, um, super anemic. And I already had had anemia to boot before, you know, my diet changed. So, um, so I can't like just cut it out completely, but I only eat the grass fed meat that has been ethically treated. Like I buy their specific ranches in my state and and in a few of the states nearby that sell meat that where it's been ethically treated, certified, where they treat the animals, they don't put the adrenaline into their blood. They don't mm-hmm. adrenalize them. They don't abuse the animals and stress them Antibiotics out. Antibiotics. Yeah, yeah. And they don't give them any of that, but they don't abuse them and stress them out. You know, they treat them ethically um, because you don't want to eat adrenalized meat from animals that have been suffering and mistreated and tortured and because that lowers your vibrational frequency but the fear the fear mm-hmm. goes you're eating the fear and it goes and into you're your taking body. it on into your energy every time you eat that it's going into your energy yeah um, i feel a lot different since i stopped um i i did stop completely for a while and then i went back to just like you said a little bit and i'll do some wild caught fish and i'll do a little I do bit wild fish i do yeah. a lot of wild fish yeah and i figure you know and that's mm-hmm. been better for me, honestly, but I will tell you something else since, uh, the more connected I've been with the divine, the healthier I've become. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I really, I really think that. Absolutely. And, me too. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it keeps you young and mm-hmm. it keeps you vibrant. Um, I want to say that to people who, who don't realize that, you know, you'll see a lot of people who are religious and they'll look really young and vibrant. That's why. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. When you have um, a really close relationship with God and you're magnifying out that Holy spirit, it's just like, I had a job where I was um, membership director at a chamber of commerce 
I did that for a long time. I ran, you know, was the membership director. I wasn't the the president, like the head, the president, president, but I was in charge of all the membership. Mm-hmm. And all of the members would always make comments to me. You're always so happy all the time. You're always smiling. You're so youthful. Da, da, da. They'd always make comments to me. And, and then they'd say, why, why, what is it that you're doing? Or what is it you do? And I would say, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I I'm it. full. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's yeah. why I, yeah. I have that because I have Holy Spirit. I'm running on Holy Spirit power. That's my battery. My battery <laughs> is true. Holy Spirit power. That's so, wonderful. I yeah. like it. That's really cool. Yeah. And I, I try not to, I'm not one of these people that goes around and pushes my religion or my spirit. No, on other no. People. Yeah. But if somebody asks me, I'm going to answer. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say I have Christ in, you know, my life. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that I've been, you know, I'm a follower and believer of Christ. And you I, should. I, you yeah. should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny, you know, when you said that, like certain people, I'll, I'll catch myself. I'll say, oh, God bless you. And they'll just look at me, you know, like, why did you say that? But now there's other people who are in tune and they don't think anything about it. Mm-hmm. But you can tell if you say, God bless you to somebody or bless you, or, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting, the reaction. Yeah, I noticed the reaction from people who are what I call atheistic, you know, they don't believe they think they're going to turn to dust and die. They don't believe they have a spirit or a soul or anything like that. They just think this is all there is. And they can be jerks and nasty and yeah, mean, and it doesn't okay. matter because they're not going to be held accountable yeah. for their actions. So they can just go and rampage all over the place. And, you know, it's fine because there is no God and there is no judgment and you don't have a soul. You're just going to turn to dust. So why, why shouldn't I just run around and do nasty things to others? You know, so I meet those people all the time. And if you say the word God to them, or you say, bless you or anything, oh, yeah. they flip out on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they like go crazy. Well, they're going to yeah. be really surprised. That's all I can say. They're going to have a big shock to their system. Well, I mean, a lot of them who've already passed on this planet have already had the shock to the system, right? You know, when, when you die and you find out, Oh, look, I'm leaving my body. Oh my gosh, I'm a spirit. Oh, you know, it's like, (laughs) it's already shocking for them. But I, I I don't understand that mentality. Honestly, Uh, the hardest, I, one thing about me, I've never judged anybody for their religion, their spiritual beliefs, their lack of spiritual beliefs, whatever people who deny God, who turn their back fully on God and say, there is no nut, there's nothing, there is no creator. We came from apes, the earth blew up and it just became this thing, you know, yeah. The, the intricate things on a bug. One time I was looking at a bug that was on the screen and I was looking at all how intricate the body of this bug is. I'm like, you can't look at something like that and say that it didn't have a divine creator. There was an architect that made that there was some sort of a, an artistic creator who designed all of this. You That's can't... true. That's true. Yeah. In the animals, I will say that too. Part of being an empath and part of being so intuitive is I have a real um, connection with the animals. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to mention that because um, we, we haven't really talked about it so much, but the animals, um, have little souls too. Yeah, they do. They they totally do. do. And you know, it's nice. It's nice to connect with them. And the more, that's one more thing I wanted to add, the more you connect, I go outside and the hummingbirds will come right up to me. Oh, me too. Right. right Yeah. They're not afraid of me. They don't fly. I get dragonflies that come Uh around me. They Uh land on me. I get butterflies Uh landing on me all the time. All the little birds who are usually afraid will all come up right by me. I've had deer. I was doing a Reiki healing on a client in my backyard one time and a deer came right up to us and was sniffing her head. It's like they were attracted to the Reiki I was doing. Right. Because of the energy. They know it's weird. They know they can feel, I'll tell you what it is. It's the energy. We're back to the energy again, Mm -hmm. because they can feel your energy and they can feel that you're at a certain, um, frequency and that frequency is a love frequency right. and they, they, they feel that off. love frequency absolutely absolutely yeah yeah i also get hawks and eagles seem to follow me everywhere i go which a native yes. american yes. believes that represents creator you know that's creator and i have that relationship with creator and i always feel like 
the reason Hawk and Eagle are with me is it's just God always letting me know I'm watching you. I'm taking care You're of exactly you. You're exactly right, Kimberly. I have had the yeah. same, I've had the same thing and I've had, um, here I've had Hawks a lot, which is, mm-hmm. I almost feel like when I've had, uh, crows like and it's always like a warning if I see a a flock of crows I know Mm -hmm. it's a warning and then if I see birds are always a a a good message or a good way to kind Mm -hmm. of what's going on hawks um are bringing a message also um we have um here in New Mexico we have our um oh gosh why can't I think we have our um uh gosh our state bird why can't I think of it anyway our road runner Oh, and that's right. So, the Roadrunner. Yeah. I forgot. I remember that. I actually yeah. saw the first one I, time I ever saw Roadrunner was in Arizona. <laughs> well, I've got a couple that live out here behind mm-hmm. my house. And, you know, it seems like they're messengers. So mm-hmm. when I see a Roadrunner, I, it's, it's like confirmation for yeah. me that, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. I and, get songbirds. I'll be in, and it's interesting. I'll be doing sessions with clients and I'll have bir- birds appear in my window, like specific colored birds appear, like literally right in the window when I'm doing a session. And it's always a confirmation of whatever. It's always right when I'm telling the client something super important, like really important. And yeah. that's like a confirmation that what I'm saying is correct, you know. Or little spirits in those birds is what yeah. I hear. If they're nature spirits, you know, mm-hmm. that are coming about too. Yeah. I agree with that. I've had that happen too. And, and for a yeah. long time, for many years now. Mm-hmm. So it's, after you have it for a while, you kind of start to, and then people look at you really weird. But if there's somebody else yeah. around, now I will say this, if I'm outside by myself, everything's cool. The birds are all around. But if there's somebody else who's not in tune like I am, they won't come around. Like the lady next door is always like, why don't the birds come over to my yard? <laughs> <laughs> I feel really negative bad. energy I don't want to tell her I just like oh I oh, they all because they're all residing in my backyard that's I why know. I mean oh I have thousands God. of them living on my property I mean it's, it's they all love it here you know <laughs> <laughs> anyway I don't say anything I just smile <laughs> yeah but when one thing people who are watching this video if you don't already know this when you're when your pets pass away they go to the same place we go to so do all the yeah. animals and creatures on earth everything comes from source. Everything returns back to source. Everything's created in heaven. And in the Bible, when it says you are created in the image of God, if you think about the fact that every one of us looks different, we're also different sexes. And then if you look at the ETs, they are all green and blue and and gray and short and tall and skinny. And you'd say, okay, does God look like 50 million different types of ETs? What, you know, who created them? Well, that's because the outside physical part wasn't created by God. Your Holy spirit was created in the image of God. Yeah. It's your spirit. So your spirit comes from heaven. It's created by God in the likeness of the Holy spirit of God. And then it goes into these costumes that we put on to have these physical experiences in these classrooms we come to that are called planets or like a college you go to, to learn. Well, and that's Um, why I go back to the energy. Because Mm -hmm. that's what we are. We're made of energy. We are all energy. That's that's what I talk about in this book. And that's Mm -hmm. that's really why I wrote this, to be honest with you. I wanted people to understand that you can draw things to yourself, that we're made of energy, that everything is energy. Um, I talk about a lot of different things in here, but that's one of the biggest things I wanted people to realize that we have more power than we give ourselves credit for. We actually are little creators and we have we the ability, right? We have the ability to create. Absolutely. And All day so long. It, right. <laughs> it, 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 but, but I don't, we were never taught that in school. No. And I think that's one of the really, um, that was the turning point for me to do it and to see it happen, to manifest things. Mm-hmm. For me, it was when I was doing real estate and I was a single mom and the kids had to have food on the table. So I did what I had to do, but it was interesting because I learned how the universe works and how the energy works and how God works. And, you know, when they say in the Bible, God wants the best for you. He does. Yes, absolutely. But it, right. But we've been filled like you spoke earlier with a lot of fear and a lot of conditioning mm-hmm. and a lot of programming, a lot of wrong beliefs. 
Yes. And, and if we change the way we think and the change what we say and how we feel about things, it's not just, you know, they talk about manifestation. Manifestation comes when you can see it, when you can say it, and when you can feel it. You have to be able to feel it. A lot of times they leave that part out. You have to see yourself prospering and know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or see yourself happy and know what it feels like. That's the, that's the key to manifestation, to manifesting what you want. That's what I learned. Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. And, you know, the most, the most important thing that everybody needs to understand is that God is all merciful, unconditional, loving, does not judge us. We judge ourselves and the, what I call the angelic tribunals judge us. So like if you're committing crimes against humanity, you will be held accountable by the angelic tribunals and, or what they call the celestial tribunals, but God itself source that creates everything Love is, that. is the frequency of unconditional love. It doesn't sacrifice its son. It doesn't tell you to go sacrifice yours. It doesn't murder. It doesn't kill. It doesn't wage war. It doesn't smite your enemies. It doesn't do that. There's two gods spoken about in the Bible. There's the God of love. And then there's basically Satan or Lucifer because that's the other God, because, because any God that would create wars or kill your enemies or blah, 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 that doesn't come from the God, the source, the Supreme, what I call the, the prime creator, the prime creator that made everything that is the frequency of unconditional love and, and unconditionally loves each and every one of us, no matter how stupid you are, no matter how many bad choices you make, there's still love, there's still mercy, there's still grace. And it, and that continues on forever. It's non-ending. It goes on and on and on forever. And that's why we're taught to do the same thing is to love our neighbor. And even if somebody is really horrible to you, pray for them. Yeah. Because if you send them bad energy, that bad energy comes back to you. Yes. That's why, you know, when you're really upset with somebody, pray for them. Yes. Number one, it'll help them. And it'll also help you because you yeah. won't be carrying it around with you anymore. Yeah. You take it off your heart. You get it off of your heart. You also cut those ties because when you have a negative thing going with somebody, you get corded to them and you don't want right. to have a cord. You don't want to have that cord. And you also don't want to carry the burden on your heart because that will cause heart problems and block your heart chakra. Sure. So um, it's really, really important to let all that go, give it over to God, forgive, forget, do the Ho'oponopono prayer. You know, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You know, yeah. it's so important to do that. Well, yeah, it is because that's how disease develops in the body. And I yeah. think they're starting to finally realize this, um, that when you internalize, that's how disease develops. And if we yeah. can just stop doing that and change how we think. And I work on it. Like I said, I'm, I'm working on it right now. I'm working on reprogramming um, some thoughts and I'm working on reprogramming my reaction. You know, we always have such a, a quick reaction. Yeah. Uh, when somebody I says work on that too. All the yeah, time. And so time. I'm working on step back, watch your reaction. Take a and, breath and just kind yeah, of, yeah. 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 Instead of being so quick mm -hmm. that, cause you know, it's, it's hard when you're it's in hard. business, right. You're in business for so long. I'm right. always quick, quick, quick in business, yep. but this is a whole different thing. Now it's learning to be react with a loving response and a kind response, regardless of how someone is acting towards you. Mm -hmm. You can respond lovingly and calmly. And that's, that's my lesson right now. That's what I'm working on. So that's what I'm teaching people too. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I'm yeah. looking at my cat on the video here. I don't know what she's <laughs> up to. <laughs> Such well, a little character. I'll tell you, she thinks she's a human. Yeah, they all do. <laughs> she wants to eat my food and not her food. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I love the cats. And I think the cats, you know, I've had different people on my show that talk about the cats and they, you know, we wait on them hand and foot. So it's quite interesting <laughs> why we do that. Cause we just cater to our cats, don't we? Isn't that mm -hmm. interesting? Uh -huh. I, I think she thinks she's the queen of the household. Yeah. <laughs> and that we're her, we're her servants basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're, we're here to feed her. I'm not sure what happened, but something happened way back when with the cat. 
I'm just going to say that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know that they scare demons away and that's why witches have always had cats. So anybody who, who is considered a witch, they always show them what the cat, the reason why witches have cats is because they scare off demons. Demons do not like cats. How funny. Yeah. Yeah. They keep demons out of your house, actually. They keep the rats out for sure. (laughs) I I do. Um, put white light around myself all the time. I do surround my house with white light. I do all that kind of stuff. I hope most people do. Um, it's not weird or crazy to do that. You guys no. just protecting yourself and it's the intention. What it is more than anything, it's the intention that you're saying, God protect my home. Um, Jesus, you know, protect, you know, my house, my car, whatever you want to say. Um, those it's the intention. And when you put that intention out to the universe, it comes back to you. So yeah why it's important yep except i call me yeshua and not jesus <laughs> because you know, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to change you have to try it. i'm i know i know it's because you're so used to saying that name and so is everybody everybody's so used to calling him by I that am. name because they convinced us that that was the name um and um but once i started calling him that i got more and more used to it and now i don't ever say the yeah, that's the Jewish. Name. Yeah, that's the Jewish name for him. That that was his Hebrew name, but it was yeah. changed. You know, I think we talked about it on your show. Yeah, we did. We did his name because of the gematria, which is the yeah. same as Satan and Lucifer. So, yeah. yeah, they made his name basically equivalent to um to Satan and Lucifer to trick people into worshiping Satan and Lucifer. So it's crazy. Yeah, but his. I mean, there wasn't a letter J in the Hebrew language back then. It didn't even exist. That's so, interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. Wow. I didn't yeah. know. Really. Yeah. Huh. So it was, it was pronounced Yeshua. That was how it was pronounced. And people want to call it Yashua or Yeshua, but it's actually pronounced Yeshua. 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 Yeah. And it's Y-E-S-H-U-A. And that's how it's pronounced. And the reason I know this is because I read, write, and speak Hebrew. So okay. Why, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I know that. I read, write, and speak about nine different languages oh wow okay so, yeah and that's one of the languages that I chose to learn and I chose to learn it because I knew it was the language of my boss and I wanted to learn his language <laughs> that oh, and Aramaic cool. which I don't know Aramaic but someday I want to study Aramaic too because that was also they spoke both kind of at that time period okay. yeah so yeah that's kind of interesting okay yeah so um I'm trying to think what else I wanted to ask you, because we've been doing this for, this is kind of um, over an hour now. I don't want it to go too long um, because um, I don't want to bore people. What the problem with doing when I go too long with some of these videos and people, how do you want to say? Give well, they won't be bored time. with us, Kimberly. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you can ask me whatever you want to ask me, yeah. but yeah, we've been talking for a while. <laughs> but that's true. We've been talking for a long time. So, yeah. so tell, tell, tell everybody about your work, a little about the work you do as an energy healer, like what types of work that you do with people and what you're looking for. So like when I'm sending people to you, what kind of things can you help them with? What are some of the things you can help yeah. people with? Well, as far as energy healing, you know, I've taken, um, I learned with an Aztec gentleman, but then I also learned with, um, Penny and Ron Levin. And, but I'll tell you what it is. My energy is so strong and it really is that I can give you energy right now. I can send you energy through Zoom and I can actually pick up intuitively what, where you need the energy. So here, I'll just send you some energy here. We're like, what the heck? I'll just do I, this. I, I'd appreciate some because I've got I, all, I'm gonna do it. I don't all do kinds this very of stuff often. going on. I've got all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, hold on, sit still for a minute, sit still. And I'm sending this, you guys, to her heart. That's where I'm sending it because that's where she needs it right now. And she'll tell you, well, you can just say if you feel it or not. Are you feeling me? I feel a vibration in my heart space. It's vibrating. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's weird. I actually feel that. I know you do. Yeah, it's vibrating. Yes. (laughs) So I am, uh, uh, I'm just, I work with the angels and I have that kind of energy. And so you feel the healing, you feel the warmth. 
Yeah, it feels it feels kind of warm, but it feels like tingly, like tingles. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I'm just feeling your heart a little bit. And it only takes me a second. And it just depends. I can tell how long it needs or not. And you're good. I mean, but I gave you some real strong energy. I have that ability um, to heal people. I just do. And it's the inner, and it's not me. It's God. It's coming from God. Exactly. I don't take credit from it for it. Yeah. Um, but I just have the ability. And so I don't have, I just can, um, I scan and feel, you know, intuitively what needs to be fixed. And then I just send the energy. Yeah. Well, I totally felt that. Like yeah. I could feel it like vibrating. Yeah. It was yeah. vibrating. It's pretty strong. And so, and, but I have to watch it because, and I'll just tell you this secret when people come and sit next to me, like I've gone to sit next to people and then they attach themselves to me. They want to be around me all the time because they like my energy. Mm -hmm. I have a happy, joyful. Yeah. I attract energy. people to me like a magnet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and not to be weird or anything, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I have to be careful because yeah, me too as an empath, because we take right. on people's and they drain us. Yep. They, they'll, they'll take what they can and they don't mean to, it's not, no, it's, yeah. they're not purposely, they're not like, Oh, I want to drain her. You know, they don't know well, that. I have had one guy do that yeah. to me. I have had one person, um, tap into my energy. And every time I would talk to him, I could feel him taking my energy. And I said, and I said, stop it. And I realized that he was taking my energy. So I've had that happen. To be yeah, I met, I met a dark magician. I was at a spiritual bookstore one time. Mm -hmm. And I was having coffee and I met a dark magician, uh, there and sat and had a conversation with him. And the whole time I was talking to him, I started to feel sicker and sicker. And like, Great. I started to feel like I was being like, he was, he was like draining my life force energy. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. and he was purposely doing it. Like he yes. totally knew what he was doing. You betcha. Yeah. And, and I, when, I, when I got away from him, I, I started to feel better again, but the whole time I was in his presence, right. I felt like. Like I was just, I, like I was being shriveled up into like, I can't even right. explain it. It was such an awful feeling. It was terrible. Right. Yeah. Well, and you asked me, so as I've developed my gifts, I felt it. Yeah. I felt him taking my energy and I said, stop taking my energy. And then now I've cut that person off and I've blocked him and I, they can't. So that's what I'm talking about, you know, because some people know how to do that and they, they know who we are and they, yeah. Yeah. And once they feel our good energy, mm -hmm. what they want to feel good, like we do, they don't, they want us, you know what it is. They don't want to do the work and connect with the divine. They just want to steal ours. They, they just want to steal it from us. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, they think it's easier. It's a lazy thing, but again, it's that not wanting to be held accountable for your behavior. Yeah. So yes, I can heal. Yes. And I'm <laughs> have to be able to do that. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, um, is there any, is there any last minute words you have for everybody, like advice with all the yeah. stuff that's going on? Like, so yes. the coming things, because we know that things are going to just get crazier and crazier and more stressful on the planet here, but it's all like a big, like a show, like a theater performance to wake up all the, the people. So for the people who are already awake, who are watching all this going, oh my God, when is this going to be over with? I can't take it anymore. What is some advice you can give to everybody to just kind of set, calm them down and make them feel a little more at peace and a little more Hold balanced? On. Let me tap into my angel and see what she says. So don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear and stay balanced, stay connected with God, know that you're loved more than you could know. And just don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. As long as you're connected with God, there's nothing to be afraid of. There really isn't you guys, you'll be okay. Actually, you're going to be better than okay. You guys, it's going to be so great when we finally make it through all of this. But for right now, just don't let the fear in. Mm -hmm. Stay connected with God. Just and don't watch the, don't watch the TV. Don't watch the negative stuff. Watch old movies. I mean, I watch old reruns of the Waltons. You know, I do. I, watch <laughs> I mean, just don't, don't, don't play into it. Do not, yeah. don't play into it. That's what I can say. And that's what the angels want you to know. Just, you know, be, um, don't be fearful, be at peace, you know, and stand up. I will say this, you know, 
stand up for yourself, stand up for yourself. You can't, you, we all have our own integrity and our own soul and our own choice. You have the choice to say, no, I don't feel comfortable with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stand up for yourself is all I'm saying. It's very important that we each stand up for ourselves. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. Absolutely. With everything you're saying. Um, also I do believe and, and tell me what you think about this, but I feel like by the end of 2022, this will all be behind us and everything's going to be ironed out by then. Like, I just have yeah. this sense of like knowing that by the end of 22, 2022, it literally will be hindsight. Yeah. 2020, you know yeah. 2023 is going to be a fantastic year. Yeah. That's what I feel, I feel 2023 is just going to be great because yes, you're right. I'll, I'll come through on 2022 and by 2023 comes, it's going to be a whole different world. Like you won't even recognize it. That's what I think too. Yeah. The biggest trouble I'm having right now is I've had to cancel my vacation three years in a row. Cause I had planned, I had saved up a whole bunch of money to go over to Europe. Yeah. Um, and I had to cancel that three years in a row now, two years in a row because of the thing, you know, that's going around the planet that, you know, whatever you want to call it, I call it the yeah. plague. The but plague. when you get to go, it'll be yeah. better and it'll yeah. be more peaceful. So when you yeah. do get to go, it'll yeah. be, that's what I'm, I'm just right. telling you. I'm just, I was better. hoping I'd be able to go in fall of 2022. That's what I was hoping for, but I don't know if I'll be able to by then or not. I pick up 2024. Ooh, I did. That's what I got. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I think there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Between yeah. now and then that we won't be able to it's kind and of, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, um, it's going to be a different world. It's going to be completely different and everybody who will be here will be more peaceful and loving. Mm -hmm. and a different it'll be a different vibration everything it'll be different yeah you know, in a good way, mm -hmm. in a good way. Yeah. well I think what's going to happen is a huge percent of people are going to be waking up really soon in the next coming months whoever is left who still they just refuse to do it they're going to be leaving here um, because I got 32% but some of them are not going to be leaving through death they're going to have what are called walk-ins if you're familiar possible. with walk-ins. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. It's they're, they're going to have walk-ins. Some of them will be dying. I got what I was told was 5% will be going through death and the other 27% will be walk-ins. Those are going to be beings from higher density, right. loving frequency right. that are going to come in that want to come here to help uh, ascend the planet for the, right. to create the heavenly earth that we're going to be creating. They want to come here to help build that. They're people who are coming in with all kinds of knowledge and stuff, and they need bodies to come into. So the people who just won't wake up or they're just given up on their lives or whatever, they're just, you know, done, they're going to be replaced. They're going to be switched out. Basically. Yeah, but then you wonder, you know, their souls will have to go and they'll have to go somewhere else to a different dimension to learn yeah. to get to the point where we're at now. So exactly. Be, just so you guys know that their souls will go somewhere else. Yeah, no, they're yeah. going to go to another third yeah. density planet mm -hmm. where they continue on with their learning, learning until they're ready to go through this again. Because like, you know, the WW thing, you know, that everybody says, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get canned off of YouTube, but the, where we go, you know, whatever we go. Oh yeah. So, so that also, it's not just about together and unity consciousness. It's also about the fact that every soul ascends at some point on their soul journey. So on every soul's journey, the soul goes through an ascension process, every single soul, there's no soul that's ever left behind. There's not one soul in all of creation of creator that is ever left behind. They all get to go through the same learning processes and steps, and they all get to go through an ascension process. You come from source, you return to source, and the journey in between is up to you. It's up to how long does it take right. me to learn versus how long does it take you to learn versus how long does it take my family that's still not away? You know, how long does it take yeah. everybody? Well, and I just got a, I just got a little hit that I'll just tell you the people who are stuck, like in between, mm -hmm. they will, 
they will be able, they'll be like freed because there's a lot of people stuck you guys in between because mm-hmm. they get confused when they pass and that those are the people that I help go. But th- sometimes when they get stuck, they get, they don't know where it's, which way to go. And I just want you to know that those people will also um, like be released and go, I don't know why I got that, but I did. So there you have Oh, it. that's interesting because if you hadn't seen videos of mine from before I talked about all of that, and right. I don't know, just pick that up. <laughs> Yeah. So in old videos, um, I talked about what will happen to ghosts, demons, all of that. Yeah, you know, they're all going to go. They're all going. Yeah. They're all going. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I was just told to say that. So yeah, no, they're all going. So thank you for bringing that up. Cause I hadn't actually discussed that in many months, many, many months. So thank mm-hmm. you for bringing it up because I do like to remind people from time to time about what's coming because it's good to just keep track of what, you know, where are we and what's coming. Um, but in the past I have talked about that and I'm really excited for them because there are a lot of trap souls. I go to haunted buildings all the time where there's ghosts hanging around. I mean, I went to Washington DC with my best friend, Sarah, and we went in through building after building that was full of ghosts because she's a medium. That's what she does for a living. You know, she, she, um, she even solves murder mysteries and all that kind of stuff, you know, for the police. And we went into, I don't know how many buildings where we encountered all these ghosts that were hanging around. Yeah. And that's been something, and I'll just say this, and then I know we got to get out of here in a minute, but the last reading I did, you know, and I just want to, a couple things. I had an astrologer on my show uh, last week and she talked about how our psychic abilities are enhancing and I can feel like mine are too. And when she said that it really hit home with me, I did a reading for a girl last week and I usually don't talk about people who've passed, but she asked me if I could connect to her mom. And I said, Oh, what the heck? I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I was able to immediately. And so, and that's not something, like I said, I've helped people pass, but that's not something I've really done. I've never called myself a medium, but what I'm realizing is, and I bet you will too, is those abilities now are coming. Now I do have that ability. And I, And I want to tell the audience from now, and I guess it's through like the first of the year, I'm not an astrologer, but I had them, this astrology lady on my show, Claudia Trevelis, and she said that all of our, um, our gifts are going to enhance. And I believe the reason that this is all going to happen is so that we all, the people who haven't woken up yet will start to wake up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people who do have the gifts, they'll just keep getting more and more and more and more. And right. that is already happening to me. And I, is that happening to you too? Yeah. My gifts are getting stronger. I'm starting to hear voices. I had a miraculous healing experience several days ago where I actually saw this angel appear and heal me. And I was actually dying. I was actually dying. I was having a heart attack, like an actual heart attack. <laughs> And Maybe I had that, an angel. Oh, attack. that's why I sent energy to your heart. Yeah, I was, I was having, I was having one. And I think I was. I felt that, Kim. That's why I sent energy. Yeah. That's- and it wasn't a physiological heart attack. It was a spiritual heart attack because I was oh so upset. God. It was a spiritual heart attack, but I was um, really upset over um, the situation in Afghanistan. When I found out about it, I was extremely upset about it. And, um, and also knowing people who know people, like I know people who have Christian women friends over there that were being victimized by all this. And it was so upsetting to me. And then just being upset by all of the military, because I had friends and neighbors who served over there and were either permanently injured or even killed. They lost family members over there. And I was just livid. I was so upset. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And so my heart started flipping out. I started having all these heart symptoms and stuff. And I got really scared. (laughs) I was really scared. And I had, and I shut my eyes, I was praying and I shut my eyes and I saw this beautiful angel appear and she gave me this pink heart and she put it into my heart and all of my symptoms like completely vanished, like just vanished, gone, 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 gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I think I think that we are enhanced. Our gifts are enhancing. So I just want to say that. And that's a cool experience that you had. And that's probably why I felt that you needed the energy to your heart. So that just makes a whole lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I, um, yeah, I, I had not ever had that experience before where I saw such a vivid angelic, like I've, I've 
I've met my guardian angels in my dreams before at night when I'm sleeping, they'll come to me and stuff like that. But I've never like seen one, like it was standing right in front of me, like clear as day like that. I mean, it was so, it was such a visceral experience and, and just her gown, how it was swirling around her. And I mean, it was just, it was so beautiful. I was just like blown away. Like I was so blown away by it, but, but my, my gifts of what I'm seeing, like my visuals, my clairvoyance and all that is just getting like stronger and stronger and stronger. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you guys, I want to tell you guys, you all have a guardian angel and they're standing right next to you. And if you can live knowing, realizing that your guardian angel is standing next to you, you might live a little differently. There you go. Yeah. That not just, we live a little differently, but you also will open your root chakra because the root chakra has a lot to do with not feeling safe or secure and, mm -hmm. or protected. But if you know that you have this protection with you, then you have no reason to feel you know, afraid or, you know, whatever. Like, I don't feel afraid. I never, ever have fear. I may be upset or sad or be grieving or something like that, but I don't ever have fear because I know that I'm always hugely protected, hugely yeah. protected. So yeah. Yeah. But um, anyways, and you are a beautiful angel. So I thank you for being on my show. Can you please tell everybody what is the best way for them to reach you? I will put all of your links on my, um, so if you guys go to the arrow down button where the description is, you'll see all of Nancy's links, but do you want to tell people where's the best? Sure, way? you can find me every week on YouTube and on BitChute. I do High Road to Humanity, which is called Nancy Yerelt's High Road to Humanity. On my podcast, it's on iTunes and Spotify and TogiNet Radio. You can hear me, um, I'll hear my podcast and it's called High Road to Humanity. And if you want a reading, just go to my website, nancyyearout.com. It's N-A-N-C-Y-Y-E-A-R-O-U-T.com. And just click on the book button and I have a calendar and you can just book with me and um, I'll be happy to do a reading for you. And if you want to learn how to tap into your own abilities, I teach you how to do that too. So I've got some classes on there and I've got, oh my gosh, I have a VIP membership. We just started doing. So I've got special videos that I only put on my website for the people who are the VIP members. So that's something we just started. So you guys will have to check that out. So, and thank you. How fun. How yeah, fun. Thank it you. Thank you so much for being here and everybody yeah. please like share and okay. subscribe. And when you hit the like button, it actually helps this video to get seen by more people and please share it with as many people as you can, because we're trying to educate and help as many on the planet as we can. So the more you guys are all digital warriors and you get out there and you share this information with everybody so they can get some truth and they can get some spiritual nourishment for their soul, you know, on my channel and, or maybe learn to heal themselves or something. I mean, that's what we're here to do. So please share, 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 and, and like, like it so that more people can see it and thank you all for joining me and we'll see you next time thank you so much nancy and i'm sure we'll have many more conversations and and for all you who want private sessions i'm sending them her to her right now and, and a couple other people so um if you want to do classes i have lots of classes on my website right now spiritual growthjourneys.com. I have a, a brand new chakra balancing and healing workshop. I've got a nine hour energy medicine, total, all of it, like the whole, everything you want to know about energy medicine known to man. I got that up there, got a past life regression, shamanic journey up there. And then I've got my weekly women's um, spiritual support group, which is like a private session with me, but with a bunch of other ladies, just like you. So, um, check out spiritualgrowthjourneys.com, my classes page for that information. And thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Take care.